welcome to the Board of Education meeting for Thursday, January 19th, 2017. May um, I have the attendance? Mrs. Bailey? Here. Mrs. Lightford? Here. Mrs. Massimil? Here. Mrs. Murphy? Here. Mrs. Perry? Here. Mrs. Shea? Here. Mrs. Hobbs? Here. Mrs. Vashon? Here. Um, would you all please join me in the foot of the lead? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I, we don't need it after <coughs> this part, but... Um, okay, so no adjustments. 5.0 public comments on agenda items. Are there any members of the public that would like to speak on any agenda items? Seeing none, we'll close <coughs> public comment. This takes us to 6.0, new business, and 6.1, the meeting minutes of December 1st, 2016. Move approval as presented. Second. Any adjustments or changes? Okay, all in favor? Six plus two. <coughs> Thank you. And that takes us right up to 7.0, our workshop. Um, we are doing a follow-up presentation with Harriman Associates for our long-term facilities planning. Um, that's the physical buildings, but I just thought it might be a good time to get a quick update from the superintendent about some um, meetings that have been happening about schedule changes long-term. So <coughs> mind giving us a quick update on that before we get to the buildings. Sure. So um, we continue to work collaboratively uh, inside the district to look at start times and uh, schedules for the, uh, the current schedule, but also potential changes that we could make in the upcoming school year that would allow us to maximize learning time for all students, K through 12, um, and potentially make adjustments. Uh, we're using a few uh, constraints or non-negotiables, if you will, in that decision-making process. Uh, one of which is that we don't want any of our K-5 students to be at a bus stop before 7 a.m. Um, all high school and middle school would have to be dismissed no later than 325 in order for extracurricular activities to occur. Um, we also currently, our longest bus run is 50 minutes, so we didn't want any child being on a bus longer than 50 minutes. Um, and we're exploring the idea of currently we have three separate bus runs, a, a high school, middle school combined run, a Wentworth run, and then a K-2 run. And we've been exploring the idea of um, uh, consolidating that down into two runs so that we're not sending our buses out at three times, which has <coughs> allowed us to really look closely and examine the benefits and challenges of five different options. So we continue to do that. Our next plan is to develop a survey um, that would go out to three different stakeholder groups, a survey for students to get feedback from them, a survey for, from staff, and a survey that would go to parents. Um, we're really trying to make sure that we're gathering as much input um, and feedback as we can because we recognize that any change will, will feel really different um, and we want to be able to come up with as many solutions and supports as possible uh, if and when we're able to make these schedule changes. So we're hoping that that uh, survey will go out sometime in February and um, that will also give us time to start having some conversations with our staff and really um, learning more about what benefits and challenges they might see in some of the different options. Um, but our ultimate goal would be that we could have um, some recommendations to the school board by early March so that families can begin to plan if there are any changes that are recommended through the process. Okay. Thanks. Um, now I'll turn it right over to Dan. And <laughs> <laughs> well, we were uh, communicating today and uh, we thought we had given the long presentation and talk for two hours uh, on December 15th and we thought tonight it would be good to let you talk and answer questions and uh, do anything we can to support the discussion that uh, will go on tonight. And uh, with me tonight is Lisa Salwin, who we met the last time. And I think you all have the handout that we had before, and we've got uh, drawings projected uh, that we can we can look at and discuss. So I, I think uh, tonight we're we're here to help you in any way that we can. And um, I'm not sure how would you like to start the discussion. 
Um, Julie communicated to us that the uh, town manager had asked uh, for some input from you uh, to go into their uh, facility, facilities master plan. And our thought on that was that uh, it would be good to talk tonight about the potential of sort of claiming or reserving or setting aside some some of the land on the campus uh, in order to realize your long-term uh, educa educational facility expansion goals as a possibility. And we'd also, if, I don't know where that process is right now, but whenever it's up and running, we would very much uh, like and think it would be appropriate if we and, and, and you or maybe a, a group of you could meet with their uh, planner uh, to, to talk about all the work that's been done uh, on the school side that could then get rolled in potentially uh, into the uh, town side. So uh, other than that, again, we're, we're here to, uh, uh, to answer questions and uh, I'll turn it back to you, Kelly. Well, I had one question just to start out and I, this, well, I was left with this in my head rattling around after our last meeting. <laughs> that, you know, we're presented with a bunch of different options and we need to focus, obviously, to decide where our energy should lie in our dollars. And I was thinking, you know, Todd would be a good person. I would I want to ask the same question. So between you and Lisa and Todd, if you could give us like an objective <coughs> professional opinion about which building, grouping or individual building, it's in the worst shape physically for the students that are in there and efficiency wise. Like just redline it, what would be your first get rid of without any idea about you know, the, the students make up in the building, but just which buildings in the worst shape, bottom line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want to go first? Sure. <laughs> and not only many are in terrible falling down shape. That's right. not what I mean, right. but just. Right. I mean, they're all functioning. Um, the biggest concern I have is the freestanding portable at the middle school. Mm -hmm. um, it's as illustrated by Dan last time we met, it's, it's inefficient. Um, it's unsafe in terms of the program that has to happen with the sixth graders traversing back and forth during the day across basically the delivery route for the building um, in all kinds of weather like yesterday. So there's another safety issue there that the, the travel conditions are not always great for students. Um, who may not be wearing jackets and so forth. Or pants. May not. Pants. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they could be wearing shorts. They didn't know any wore jackets. Right. Right. I thought that was um, the rule. Um, it's, it's, and it's, it's a, it's, at the end of the day, it's a temporary structure that has been, has become uh, permanent, mm -hmm. if you will. Um, Mrs. Sizemore can probably tell us it's been there since 98, 98. I think, yeah. um, in its uh, current state. and. Uh, we've we've adapted it. We've made do with it. Um, in many ways, we've been uh, we've been forced to be successful with that building, and uh, two thirds of it is air conditioned because of the rooftop units. Four classrooms have camp style monitor heaters in them, which, um, as a result, in hot and humid conditions, provide terrible indoor air quality for the students and teachers in those rooms. Um, the rooftop units are now aging and reaching the end of their useful life and are becoming very costly to maintain. Um, and it absorbs a giant portion of the parking lot of that building, which renders the rest of your parking very compromised. Right. Um, and that's just sort of without any preparation <laughs> off the yeah. top of my yeah. head. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Mrs. Hathorn would be happy yeah. to pipe in on the programmatic limitations. So the other learning communities share two science labs. The, that those portables have one science lab, which is also the teacher's lunchroom and the workspace for about 240 students and 11 teachers. Wait, so that's another. We do now, pardon? The, the science lab room. in the, the portable is the teacher lunchroom and portable space, so for the copier side. It's the teacher room. Teacher's room. And Todd was able to add a bath, a one teacher bathroom last year, two years ago. Two years but ago. They didn't have that either. But we had to steal space out of the boys' bathroom to do it. Very <laughs> 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 good. So was that, sorry. Oh, go ahead. This is the workshop. So are we just um, talking about 
You mentioned the one. No. Portable. Yeah, that, I'm just and getting started. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, was uh, that another well, it, one added yeah. right then when you mentioned that? No, no, the same one. Okay. So that's okay. in the portable. I mean, I mean, that would be my biggest concern. You know, if there's some way to right size um, that middle school structure to accommodate the full student load and the academic program because the common spaces are undersized. The cafeteria, the art and music, um, the gymnasium is, you know, it's it's a size, but it's a small size. <laughs> it's a size. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and so it, it, it's just, it, the building's 20, almost 21 years old. Um, the mechanical equipment inside it, there are 127 heat pumps in that building, and they are 15-year units that we now got 21 years out of because of our preventive maintenance program, but they are beginning to fail with regularity, um, and so they're becoming costly to maintain. So, um, so how many spots are in that? Twelve. Oh, in the portable yeah, or in the whole? There's, there's 11 classrooms the plus that lab, lab, lab slash lab. faculty room. <laughs> Okay, I saw you, Jackie. Yes, okay. I was waiting for him to stop talking. It's okay. <laughs> My turn? Yeah. Several years ago, we did a study on the middle school, and I can't recall the figure that we had to add on to the middle school on the back and develop the play field that is down over the banking. That was determined to be a viable project. And what it didn't address, in my opinion, was to increase the size of the cafeteria. Uh, and I guess there are two things that I would like to explore. One is the addition, to do an addition renovation at the middle school as we did at the high school. In other words, do it in pieces uh, because I think we do have the available land. That's number one. And number two, the feasibility of taking the land that currently houses the maintenance building and the skating rink in that area and what would it take to build a K-2 building? <coughs> On December 15th, we, um, I remember talking about um, building a road out past the middle school which I've heard from you also before about the concern of only having one in and out to the middle school um, and making a road up through to Sawyer Road. And that, that, that was a part of the site project to back there. As that well. was part of the what would have been. That was part of the project at the time. Was was to have another road yes. going forward. Yes. But there was there's enough land there to add on to the middle school. Mm -hmm. And as I say. Beyond that, what I call the soccer field or the football field or whatever, it's woods at the present time, there's enough <coughs> land to put, put in a full field and it's, uh, what do I want to say, there are no, as far as we know, there are no ecological conditions. It's not wetlands. It's one of the few areas up there that is not wetlands. And so, <coughs> I mean, as I say, and, and I would do that first. I would do that type of a renovation addition for the middle school, and then I would look at the <coughs> feasibility of building a K-2 building in the vicinity, and the only place I can think of in the vicinity is, is that space uh, that, is, that is currently where the skating rink is. How, can I just, um, I just want to give Dan and Lisa a chance to see, like, is your assessment the same that the middle school seems to be? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think the needs of the middle school are acute. I, I think mm -hmm. that there are things that you you could do and should do to the three primary schools, yeah. but I think the middle school is, is an acute situation for all of the, the reasons that Barbara and, uh, and Todd said. And 
you know, there's a there's a uh, reduced list or litany maybe of, of, of the shortcomings of middle school in this, but in the original full report, there is just line after line after line of it. Mm -hmm. And um, in in the in the plan that we showed there, um, we were saying that that the, exactly what Jackie's saying. If there's room in the back where that field is. Um, that appears not to be encumbered by wetlands, although you would need to retest it because it's been 10 years since you did it. And then there's a, a, a plot of land over to the right of that potential extension driveway that you were talking about. Um, and all, all that land, that, what happens is the site uh, where the middle school is is high, then it drops off pretty steeply, then it levels off. It's sort of flattish where those wetlands, that those shaded areas are. And then it drops off again fairly steeply to, uh, to Sawyer. And in that flattish area, you would want to test for wetlands and vernal pools, and you'd want to do a, a topography study to see what you have there. But that, that's the last uh, remaining land that has potential. And you would probably end up having to take some wetlands in order to put something back there. But it would be worth mitigating it because of the value of continuing the whole campus planning idea. So where Jackie was just talking about the maintenance garage and the ice rink, is there potential, or I should say, enough space to put some kind of a consolidated K2? Um, or is well, that space not? To the right of the maintenance building, or, or actually behind the maintenance building, is your play field for Wentworth. Right, right. And then there's the ice rink, which my understanding that the at some point, the town came in and they just dug it out. It was almost certainly wetlands at, at that at that point. Um, so you would be you would be into some significant wetlands mitigation in that area uh, if you did it. But if that were all dry land, just you know, in and of itself, that would be an awesome place to put your your next and maybe last school on that. On that there might not be n enough space. You'll as far as wetland, you'll certainly be into some mitigation. More. Again, these these days, uh, <coughs> you have to th also think about rural pools where the <coughs> constraints of building around them are much greater than in wetlands, and they're they're more they're not impossible, but they're much more difficult to mitigate if you want to take that land. Uh, so it's something that could be uh, that could be looked at. The other thing I thought of, if if you, the skating rink area was not viable. The field that we built for Wentworth, mm -hmm. we could use that land because we could then take the land where the parking lot is and the portable classroom is at the middle school and make that the play field for the Wentworth children. It's almost the same size. I thought that would become parking. I thought that was going to become parking, was my understanding. Because the middle school doesn't have enough parking, so if you put an addition on the back end of the middle school, they were going to take, right? Yeah, if you look at the, your, in your handout, page 18 is, is the site plan that, that uh, everybody's basically talking about right now. <laughs> so to the left of Wentworth, you see that rectangle, and that's the play field. And it was in that location, rather than, say, being right up against the building, because there was this pocket of upland brush there. We were able to tuck that field in between the skating rink uh, and the wetlands around it, and there's a, there's a, a piece of wetland on the right-hand side. Um, in order to put a school there, uh, even a pre-K through two school, you probably would, would need all the land of the play field, all the land uh, to, the, to the left of that, uh, where where the, uh, the skating rink is and and the land to the right, so there there would be some significant uh, filling of wetlands in that area. But you know it's it's a matter of I don't, I don't believe that those are really high quality wetlands. But again, all that would have to be inventoried by by soil scientists and figure it out. But mm -hmm. but that would be the, the nice thing about having it there is that, is that again all these buildings are then very very close to each other. Putting a building in the location on the right-hand side of the site is still is still viable. It's a little bit farther away. Maybe that's a good thing for an elementary school. It'll be it'll be uh, you know on the back end of the site it'll be down probably 15 feet or so in in, uh, in grade from where the middle school is. But th the other nice thing about it is if you could make all that work is having a, 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 a then a connector road to Sawyer because you own 
or the town owns a tiny little wedge of land uh, at the back side of that site that connects to Sawyer. So it would be excellent to do that. Yeah. I don't in any way want to stifle conversation. I appreciate thinking outside the box, but we have a time deadline if we're going to try to apply for state funding. So if we could <coughs> for tonight try to focus on the options that were given to us at the last meeting so we can make a decision. Um, um, I think Thomas, will you? Oh, okay. Oh, I, I just had another comment that I wanted to say regarding the middle school. Yeah. Uh, one of the most prominent uh, issues that I found at the middle school uh, was the problem of crowded hallways. Yeah. That the path, the path, the um, pathways are just too narrow, and there aren't enough for all the students to get from one place to another. I don't know if this problem is as acute. Oh, it's it, it is. It's, it's very it's very narrow, remember? Yeah. 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 But it, it, organization has changed, so I didn't That's know. That's true, but it is still bad. Uh, okay, so I, I didn't know if there were any suggestions to uh, mitigate that problem. On page, whatever, I'm not sure what page that is. Um, in your handout. 21? Mm -hmm. okay. mm. Uh, So where my where my cursor is uh, right there is that rope, and it's, we need to, it's, it's a very very cramped uh, place. You're you're supposed to have a minimum six feet clear by code for a hallway in a in a in the school building, and that one is seven feet wide, so it just barely meets the minimum code. But it has lockers on one side. Mm -hmm. So when you have lockers, you essentially lose two feet of, of space or more. You have the, the door, then you have the body. And, and so it's just incredibly uh, cramped. There's not an easy way to solve that, because I believe that there is structure on the hallway on both sides that it, you know, is holding up the, the, the floor above. And um, that would be uh, cost prohibitive to move. You could widen the hallways, but you probably would still have a column somewhere along there that would constrict it a little bit. So that, that's a hard one. Yeah, I think the other aspect of it too is that those hallways are the only part, uh, or those are the only hallways to get from one part of the school to the other. There are exactly. no like, other, like you have these areas jutting out, right? and you can only en enter and exit through those points. Exactly. Exactly. I, I think that only contributes more to a party pressing problem. Yes, yeah, it really, really does. Yeah. Uh, again, you, you could widen that center circular uh, lobby space some, yeah. probably, um, but it, it, it's, it's not a great setup to have all of those things pouring into one place and to make that that place very small on top of it. But in terms of in terms of uh, replacing the classrooms, we've shown. Uh, this drawing at the last meeting, you could have six classrooms down and six up, and uh, there are other potential things that you could do, as Todd was mentioned, expanding the kitchen, expanding the cafeteria, expanding the library, expanding the admin, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you know, giving, giving the administrators and guidance and everybody just more room to, to breathe, basically by filling in some of those notches in the building uh, for time. Um, so that, that whole project that we talked about the last time in 2016 dollars, I think it was, was about 18 million in total project cost. And again, what you are proposing to do from the last meeting is uh, you instructed uh, Todd and I to pull together four applications to the Department of Ed, which are due on April 14th, the three primary schools and the middle school. And those are, those are um, the Department of Ed doesn't want you to advocate for what you want, i.e. consolidation or, or something. They, they expect you to document all of the shortcomings. They will come in and tour your building. They'll, they'll score it along with all the other buildings. And then you see where you land on the score. The last time there were 71 applications, which was back in six years ago, 2010-11. And 16 of them now have been funded on that list. And so they decided to stop at, at number 16 and start a new cycle of, of applications. So, uh, and the, the timing for that will probably be 2000, late 2018 or early 2019 before those numbers would come back and you would know 
whether or not you're going to rank high enough on that list to get to get funded. But there's still 30. 50 people on that list. No, it's a new list. No, but well, right, so so they're going to update. We hope they're going to give up. They could have fallen down by now. You don't know. It's been a long yeah. time. Is it, is it a true fresh start, though? Do we know that? Yes. Yeah, okay. it's a true fresh start. They start all over. Uh, School districts in the past have often applied two or three cycles before they got funded. Yeah, Sometimes and we Wentworth didn't make that list. Never. Wentworth was 85. Like or number 85. Yeah. 85. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so my question on diagram 20, page 21, this one. Um, with these additions, do we feel like this is adequate? We all know sort of when this building was built, we were already out ground. Is this good? Or should we... <laughs> I just hate to build yeah. it and then still be like, get out your crystal ball and on there. that. Yeah. What's the, <laughs> the future expansion part? Yeah. Can you remind me what that... You, you could put another wing, like the new one that's in blue okay. on the back of that building, if you were growing okay. even more okay. over time. If you did that with it, uh, with the cafeteria and the library and the gym, be able to handle that. The, the, the larger the school gets, the more those core spaces should grow right. in order to accommodate them, or you're just <coughs> duplicating the <coughs> problems that you have right now. It, and this enlarges the cafeteria, but doesn't do anything to the gym. Is that? In that yeah. sketch, it doesn't. And 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 so the the answer to to all the questions really is that this is a master plan study. So we met with Barbara and her staff. We've toured the building uh, numerous times. We sent in a team of architects and engineers and in, uh, inventoried all the systems. Uh, and, and so this is a preliminary look at the sort of the most egregious things that were identified to us. But if you were to, s to decide to move forward with a real project, we would do what, what had been done at Wentworth, where you'd interview every single staff member, you know, just everybody in the building, all stakeholders, put together a program and you probably would end up with more spaces or more, maybe more interior renovations that are shown there right now. Um, so, so to answer your, your question about is it enough, you would, you would think that at the end of that regular programming process it would be enough because you, you would know everything that there is to know. I mean, if I could take, if I could take Barbara's head and just Planted in mind, and she can tell me everything there is to know about the building. We can program it uh, very, very quickly, wow. but normally it takes months uh, uh, of interviewing staff. Yes, I, I can let that go first. So, are, are we limited to how many schools we can apply no. at a time? No, you can apply for as many as you want. Because in those meetings well, over the past year and a half that I've been in with you, Dan, um, it was really clear to me that those K-2 schools are just in really bad shape as well. And I mean, yeah. it's hard for me to decide, well, is it the middle school or is it that? Because I mean, both. So yeah. We're applying for all four. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The yeah. State. Yeah. So that's not what we have to decide. No. no. Nope. We're doing that regardless. Okay. Trying to prioritize. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to do is prioritize okay. the, of the options that have been presented to us. Which one do we want to set? Do we want to pass forward to the town council? Um, or to the town manager so that it can be included in the in the capital improvement plan, the comprehensive capital uh, improvement plan for the town because to go back to our budget conversation from earlier, one one town, one budget, one vision, one community, all that that we're trying to coordinate and what we want to be able to do is prioritize needs. Okay. And so we're looking at um, what is the best option that we can put forward to say, not that that's going to be the option or that's what's going to actually happen, but we have to kind of commit to a dollar amount yeah. so we can try to um, balance priorities as a town. Uh, okay. in, in, in addition to that, I think because what because the town is doing a master plan as well, you want to take all of this work that you've done already and say, our long-term or maybe short-term vision is we need significant additions, renovations to the middle school. So we want to make sure that whatever the town may have in mind for master planning the campus, that that uh, the land to do what you're envisioning there gets preserved. And then on top of that, uh, Ideally, it would be great to, to hold on to that land either in the back of the site or maybe across from Wentworth for now until you hear from the DOE about whether or not you could get to the top of that funding list. So, for example, if you got all three primary schools on the funding list, 
in, in a second that the DOE, I'm sure, would say, okay, now you need to consolidate those into one building because we're not going to fund three schools. And you have already stated that ideally, you'd, if you're going to have one building, you'd love to have it on that campus mm -hmm. somewhere for all the all the reasons that, that millions of reasons that make sense. <coughs> so ha preserving something in that right-hand side of the site that w so that it's nothing like a consolidation would be precluded as a result of the town's master plan. Uh, I, I think it's very important to, to let the, the town council know. And, and, and that's another reason to meet with whoever it is they hire or have hired to do their study because we have a ton of information that they'll want to see and drawings and facts and figures. And uh, Julie and I were talking briefly before the meeting and we understand that some additional budgets the town may want to, to have uh, for some of these options. For instance, if you were to take each of the three primary schools and renovate and get rid of all the modulars, renovate them to make them like new, what, what might that cost? That's a, that's a budget that's never been uh, developed. But, but there's things like that we can, we can do to help it out. But I, I think as a minimum, you'd want to make sure that uh, you preserve land for the, the, the future that you have envisioned as a part of, of, of your master plan. And I think you need to think about it not just from a building standpoint, but from a, an athletic field standpoint too, right. because you're very limited with the wetlands. Right. So you want to make sure that you can preserve as much land in the campus for, for all of the needs right. that you guys have in the future. And then expansions too, thinking mm -hmm. about that. Jackie? <coughs> have, have, I don't know this, so this is a rhetorical question. <coughs> Excuse me, please. Have we ever looked at the land across from the library. I mean, they talked about putting a hockey rink there. Mm -hmm. But if we, that's a pretty large piece of land if you went from that road out to the old Wentworth entry road and you took away mm -hmm. the tennis courts and the basketball courts and put them down in the park. I mean, that to me, uh, would be <coughs> feasible, would be a smart thing to do if we had that. Are you talking, um, Jackie, about the land to the left of that Saco and Biddeford Savings Institution? That no, no, no. no. Right, right across, across the, right across across the, the library. Right, okay. yeah. Where the basketball yeah. courts yeah. are, where the okay. tennis courts yeah. back up, and that piece of land, yeah. uh, just before you get to Wentworth, is where yeah. they were talking about building the ice hockey. Right. I think that wouldn't be big enough we're talking about building primary school because it has to be one level, right? So you can't build up for a primary no. school. Well, we can. Well, we can. You can. You can. Kindergarten. 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 Second grade. Second grade. Yeah. 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 It can only be on the ground. Can you can Pre-K to yeah. one has to be on the first floor. Pre-K to but, one. Yeah. So yeah. second grade school. I'll there. tell you, if, if you were at Sokobid looking across the street at that piece of land, that's a fairly sizable land that has two basketball courts and what, four tennis courts. We also come into um, <coughs> parking. Yeah. 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 So uh, I'm just saying that that's a piece of land that we might want to have preserved as well. Yeah, I, the, yeah. the story about the tennis courts is the same as uh, the uh, yeah. basketball Well, I know that. Long. The basketball <laughs> court as well. So I believe that the land, most of the land, maybe not all of it, around that, those tennis courts, which is on page 18 of your handout, uh, is wetland. Not all of it. I think along, directly alongside the road, it may be uplands, but I think We just built it on stilts, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, school. Again, similar to building on the on the, yeah. the back side yeah. of the site where the Wentworth Playfield is, and potentially the same as building on the back end of the property. Yeah. 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 We know that there are wetlands back there, but we don't know the extent of it. We don't know anything about where there may be or may not be. We do know from the Wentworth uh, study that that wetland by the basketball courts when we met with the Army Corps of Engineers and the DEP, yeah. they said that is the lowest value wetland that right. you have. Right. And basically, I mean, they didn't come out and say they didn't care, but that would be right. easy to fill and, and look the other way on because, with permitting, 
Um, mitigation would mitigation, probably be minimal. Yeah, because it's just considered a very, it's landlocked, it's surrounded by pavement basically, right. and it's just a low value wetland. Yeah, and it's in a great location. It's one side is the uh, high school fields and the other side is Wentworth. <coughs> it, it would make a lot of sense. For the size of an elementary school, would there yeah. be enough yeah. land? So I think we're talking about play fields there. But as an elementary school, I, I don't know that that would be, I don't think that that would be enough land. Yeah. Um, yeah. Christine, you sat on this committee, so what's your... Oh, well, I definitely the middle school has the most challenges. And then, like they said, right behind it are those K-2 schools. So, honestly, at some point down the road, whether it gets state funded or not, we're either going to have to keep putting a lot of money into these things or we're going to have to do something about it because they've been renovated once, the K-2 school. Twice. Now, what, 20? 20 plus, oh, twice? 93. And <coughs> uh, well, Cammy okay. Barantis was the chair. Shirley Grover, when she was there. Pardon me? Shirley Grover. But that was at the same time. It was 2084. 84 was one uh, renovation, and 93 was another one. Right, okay. Because I've been on this board twice, and uh, when that's gone through, and <laughs> I was adamant about not doing it the second time because I just thought we were throwing money away, but everybody's wanted a neighborhood school, which didn't right. turn out to be a neighborhood school. So oh. I, I lost mean, that battle. I, I think that we have the best options. I mean, we went through as a committee and marked off the ones that weren't feasible. Right. And honestly, with the projections, the way they look, and something's going to need to be done. <coughs> Yeah, if, if I could just say something about the K-2 schools. Um, in, in very basic language, what you have there, and it's pretty obvious, you have three of them, but from a sheer facility standpoint, not talking about staffing, you, you have everything in triplicate in those yeah. schools. Mm -hmm. So every school has two boilers, that's six boilers. Every school has air handlers. You've got three sets of all of everything mechanical. You have three roofs that need to be maintained. You have three sets of portables now attached to each of those that need their 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 own individual structures attached to that. Right. Um, so I think Dan's illustration from Kennebunk, where you had the graph showing how much money you would actually end up saving over a, a span of time is a really convincing argument to say that yes, the neighborhood schools are nice, nestled in these, with the exception of eight corners, uh, housing development, um, but you have to start asking yourself the question of are we throwing good money after something that is really, I mean, it's like having a 15-year-old car with 200,000 miles on it. Are you gonna put $13,000 into that car? No. And so the, the questions do need to start being asked about the facilities um, and how much longer you want to continue to support them financially because you've been doing that all along and we keep them running and they're usable. They're cramped at eight corners. Um, it's a postage stamp lot at Pleasant Hill. You can't get any bigger at Pleasant Hill. You're stuck there. You're, you're penned in on every uh, border. And then Blue Point, you're, you're, it's a it's a bigger site, but it's an odd site. If you go in the building, you get lower and lower as you go, and so there are limitations everywhere. I mean, I think Eight Corners has the largest maybe site that's usable and uh, you can grow into. But but again, everything is in triplicate. But again, you know, adding any more classrooms, our gym wouldn't be adequate. Our cafeteria right. wouldn't be right. adequate. The playground would be, is tight already. We don't have a dedicated bus loop that doesn't include parking, right. that doesn't have parents coming into it uh, accidentally on purpose because they don't <laughs> want to turn and park. There's no, there's no way to loop through our parking lot and safely drop kids off. You have to park and then back up so kids get let out of cars. And it ter it's terrifying, to say the least, to that parking lot, which is why Parents park on the road. Parents, you know, dare to go through the bus lane. It, it, so you can add on to it, 
but the, the site around it is not equipped now for the number of people we have, and that's not a lot. So it terrifies me to think that we're going to get more people, more parking, well, fewer spaces. I mean, there are days when I don't even have a place to park if I leave for a meeting to come here for leadership or something. I come back and I circle around. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? Where do these people come from? Parked out by the dumpsters. <laughs> Everybody else. So, you know, there's, there is room for growth to a certain degree, but you have to then remember if you have 15 home rooms, you have 30 periods of gym. How do you fit 30 periods of gym in with lunches for 300 kids when you can only seat 100 kids at a time for lunch? Because right. I don't have enough tables or room for more tables. You know, it's just all of those things. And people go, oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. Well, because and I do. <laughs> the cafeteria is, is, yeah. The, yeah. is the meeting room. Right. 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 And right. I just yeah. renovated the clinic. Was that at Eight Corners? Mm-hmm. Oh, to yes. <laughs> <laughs> to make an actual clinic, which is, I mean, I mean taking away the workroom, which has also created some weird heating thing, so the clinic is now about 85 degrees every day, and nobody can figure out why, and he can't even see it on his computer as to how to adjust it. The thermostat, it's, it's just, you know, you keep band-aiding and piecemealing, and it works, and we make it work, but it's, yeah, we're headed down the you old one we're road, road of, you know, finding a the closet farmhouse. and making it an office. Yeah, I mean, right. Just Right. You add on and it doesn't make sense right. by the time you right. finish. And I would just share, a, I had a lovely experience, was that yesterday or today? Yesterday. Um, where Ann and I uh, were walking through the building and we were in the music classroom, which is split by temporary partitions so that the instructional coaches can have like an alleyway to have their desks, which is shared by three instructional coaches, while you have special education uh, equipment all along the back. So, and this is not a room that's meant to be a music room because there's cubbies on this side and so then you have instruments on this side and literally there was enough space for the students to be in a circle and the teacher was amazing the what what they're doing with what they have you would never as a parent you would never know that the, these compromises are being made but I think that Kelly could share with us how different it is when you have facilities that actually support the programs that you're trying to deliver um, and that, that we know our kids deserve. So it's, um, there's the, the dollars and cents piece and that return on investment that I think is worth our time to do when we come down to whatever options we, we think are most um, beneficial for our students. But then there's also the, like, what is the potential that we're not realizing because we're in um, such confined and cramped spaces, and I think we're starting to see that with some of our sixth grade programming and performances. So. And, and, and all of the things that you're talking about are today, and your population projections say that K-2, you're going to have another 150 kids by 2025. I mean, that's seven, eight classrooms worth of kids on top of what you have. So, <coughs> And there's no place to put them. Right. What's the purpose of the comprehensive plan? Are they asking us to predict over a certain number of years? No, so they're asking us for one big, one major problem? Because it seems like even if we were to go in with, say, what we m might come to agree about the middle school, it seems to me like it's not being totally honest about the true picture of, of what's going on. No, we school. don't have to choose one or the other. We right. just have okay. to say what are our long range facility needs right. and then together uh, we're going to see where does that fit in terms of our long range capital improvement plan for the for the whole town. <coughs> so if I was gonna throw it out there and put it into the town long range facility plan, mm -hmm. not many Specific. Nope, just what is. Yeah, right. We're not putting it in Metal any order. Middle school is a priority. And consolidating K2 and taking the three other buildings off, or well, three other buildings offline plus a set of portable at the middle school. I agree with And I think that that's really ultimately the only thing we are going to be able to do because of the projections that we're seeing. And as of right now, we're watching that trend and that number is spot on and then when you look at and it, you can talk to Dan Bacon and everybody else mm -hmm. about I know they say that these housing units apartments etc cetera, etc cetera, only if it's got a two bedroom doesn't even give you one child for the school kind of thing 
I am sorry. I don't believe it. I don't buy it because you see families that maybe could be a divorce situation or a parent's deceased. So suddenly now you've got the mother and oh, they've got two kids and this is where they can live. This is where they can afford to be. And now you just put two kids in and then oh, you've got, you know, a grandparent who might have a grandchild living with them and they're going into the school. And I think that when they say that some of these complexes are going to only put 10 kids into the school, if you take a look at some place like the Oaks, and I granted they have some three bedroom places and whatever, but I really see a lot more kids coming in than what is being suggested. Well, I mean, it's a nice way if, to put it. Even if there isn't a lot more kids, <coughs> you still have the problem of those three schools. Oh, sure. That when you look at it, I mean, we heard part of it from Todd, but when you really look at it thoroughly like you did with us, Dan, I think the picture is, becomes pretty clear to me that it makes no sense to have staff in all three buildings and specialists in all three locations and having to do that. So it's not just the buildings themselves, but it's also all the personnel. One of it. So I do have to say we share personnel as efficiently sure, as yeah. possible. You know, we yes, don't I'm duplicate sure in the sense of an art teacher who yeah. has nothing to do. We no. share them between two buildings. So right. one person teaches both schools art. Absolutely. But so you're also we don't want people time. to think and all those other right. things. We don't want people to think yeah. that there's people oh, no. duplicated for no reason at all because there are. Right. And I mean, it may be, it may be that it, just thinking a, another step ahead of that, you know, it may be that um, a future plan to utilize one of those buildings in some, some specialized way, should we build that new K-2 school, then bring it, finding a way to bring some income into that additional facility that maybe mm. that would be the one building that would be uh, renovated or brought up to be able to house a, a certain pool. community a pool? Services. Are you thinking a pool, well, Donna? Well, I'm community not thinking a pool, actually. I mean, but that's a positive services? idea. But I was thinking more in a specialized way that would bring, you know, may even bring outside children into our district to be able to specialize for this group of kids. and again, going jointly with another town or two, where now we have some income coming for those students that are being housed at that location. I'm just trying to think ahead of maybe not losing all three buildings, but I think definitely, I, I, I'm i with Christine on it. Um, I think they, that we need to be able, we need to come forward with both, both plans. Both plans. <coughs> One of the things that, um, we've talked about before that I think is important too in the neighborhood schools is that when we're thinking about future growth in the town, we don't really have a good way of knowing where those areas are going to crop up. Yeah. So if you have one K-2 school, I think Julie's made this point maybe at the last conversation, you have one K-2 school, you really don't have to worry about whether East Corners has enough space yeah. or if Pleasant Hill is sitting empty. Because you're moving the, the line are, every year. Right. You're not redistricting, you're not reallocating personnel, you're not trying to figure out where the kids are going to fit because they only have to go to one place. And it, it removes that volatility of development in different areas of this very widespread town. Jackie's been waiting. The town has done this planning before. And out of it, the, the priority that came out of the last time this was done was the first project was a renovation at the high school. Not the latest one, but the one before. Mm. And the library was the second. And the third was uh, the firehouse. And since that time, each of the firehouses have been renovated because they have to accommodate the students who are living there, you know, overnight now. So all of those projects were done and they were prioritized by a committee of working together and talking with the public. We need to let them know what we need because they're going to tell us 
what the town needs. We know that they're looking at a public safety building. We know that. They've been discussing that for four or five years. The town hall was falling apart and we found the money for the new town hall because we sold the Dunstan School and we sold what is now Albergs. That was central office when I first came to town. And the monies left over from selling those properties and others paid for the town hall. And yet you will hear in this town people saying they never voted for that. <laughs> you know. So we have got to be accurate in what we're proposing. And we also have to be accurate in our backup of why we're proposing. And, and we're talking about facilities, but when Ann mentions uh, the people part, the consolidation of some of those positions, that's extremely important when you're talking about money. Mm -hmm. So we have to be thoughtful in our presentation, but I think we have to present it all. Just based on our current projections, if we had a consolidated K-2, we would need five less teachers. And not to discount the human side, it's not like we're just saying those positions don't matter, but the reality is you would need one less administrator, five less teachers, two-thirds less kitchen staff, you know, less custodians, busing, all of that. And, the, and before you know it, you're well up to $3 million in savings tomorrow if we could open up a consolidated K-2, which is just about what we're receiving in state funding right now. So when I think about the needs of our entire town, I think about a consolidated, and the needs of the middle school as well, but the, a consolidated K-2 is the one project that I can see actually being, bringing the quickest return on investment to our town and to our community as a whole that will allow us to begin saving money so that we can meet the other needs of our community. I'm not saying that moves it in a priority list or anything like that, but it's just simple math when you start to look at. And also, I mean, just take what Todd said to us in our last conversation. We have five boilers that are 22 years old. Six. six. Well, five. Five, five that are 22 years old. Um, <coughs> can you look at just infrastructure needs in terms of technology? That is a bill that's about $300,000. And so this is money that is going to have to happen. Like we're going to have to start putting this kind of money into these existing buildings mm -hmm. just to keep them running right. because we're not going to let them fall apart. That's not an option. That's not a choice to prove the point of the need. The need is, the need is clear. We just need to make the smartest decision. Yeah, and, and a specific um, illustrative example of that is as we plan for our budget, I'm always talking with our uh, roofing people and the various contractors that service these buildings, um, Blue Point is going to need uh, over a $100,000 roof restoration on one section of the roof this summer. 125000 is the actual estimate that was given um, that I will be asking for. And as Julie said, the <laughs> we're not going to let the building start to fall apart and the roof is by far your most important segment of the building envelope. <laughs> Everything blows downhill. And so if that roof is not restored... You can look at Robbie Moulton's office. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah. He has a gutter in his Check office coffee. to collect the leaking water. But anyway, that, that's just one <coughs> tiny example uh, of one large expense. I consider 125000 a lot of money. Yeah. Um, for one section, not the whole roof, one section of that roof on that one building. And there are many other sections that are going to be needing restoration and, and improvements as well throughout the district, but just an eye-opening experience there for the budget people. And we definitely ran into that at Wentworth too. Even as construction was, we had the approval, we still were replacing high ticket items because yeah, students were yeah. still there, staff was still there, we had to. Yeah. Can't just let it get pulled down. So just hold it up everyone, just hold up the roof. <laughs> while we're waiting for construction. So when we look at these budgets, um, like the new consolidated primary school and the middle school additions and renovations, are these, I, I'm assuming these are just sort of estimates based on uh, 
Yeah, since, since again, there's there there hasn't been the normal kind of process you would have if you were you know, moving forward with a with a definite project. So what we did is we we looked at comparable buildings, recently uh, bid or recently budgeted, uh, came up with dollar per square foot numbers from those buildings. Those buildings uh, were, I believe, they are all state funded projects, which means that they're not extravagant. I mean, they're they're, they're pretty uh, conservative numbers. It's the state uh, doesn't doesn't build super super uh, extravagant schools. So then we just multiply out the square footage that, that you would expect to have, for instance, in a consolidated school, if you were setting the population target for the 2025 number, you'd have a 750 students uh, K through two school. So we said, okay, uh, the past couple of elementary schools the state has funded have been, well, I think it's 169 square feet per, per student on average. So you just multiply that out and then you multiply that out by a dollar per square foot number. So you're in the ballpark. Uh, could you do it for less? Probably, uh, but it, it's a it's a reasonable place to start because it's based on other projects. Uh, you're not counting the doorknobs at this point because you don't you don't know exactly what you're going to have, but it's a it's a good target. In option E, which is the middle school renovation um, and addition, does it calculate? Does it cost out? Um, renovating the gym as well, or is that not included? No, not not is, but it can. I mean, we can we can add anything to it that you want. We can even do it as a menu. You know, the the base project is X. Mm -hmm. Let's say the base project is eighteen million dollars. If you expand the gym, it's that much more. If you do this, it's that much more. We can. You know, but we it can sounds like you wouldn't. You would have to expand the gym if you renovated that facility. Well, I think that you'd want to expand the gym. Mm -hmm. I think it would be. You should have a gym at the middle school that's the size of the one at Wentworth. Yeah. The one at Wentworth is, is just simply a standard high school, 50 by 84 foot court, so that you know, so you can use it for for anything. And the, the one at the middle school is, is far less than that, and it has these other, you know, the track, uh, elevated track and things that make it less useful than it might be. So you would you would at least want a, a, a gym that I think uh, Wentworth is somewhere in the 10,000 square foot range, Same something like that. Same size as Plumber Gymnasium. Pardon? Same size as Plumber Gymnasium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was <coughs> in, intentional on the part of the building committee yep. to have a full size regulation court that you could hold basketball, high school basketball games there if you wanted to, and you'd have several hundred uh, seats in the bleachers, and you could divide it in two and have two simultaneous gym classes and. You know, again, that's that's a that's the right way to do it. Long long term, you'll you know, 30 years from now, you'll be very very happy that uh, the people that planned it 30 years before made it a, a good size. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yes. Well, with, with regards to the estimate on a consolidated primary school, when I look at the <coughs> bottom line, why is that? Why are construction costs so much more now? Than five years ago when we did Wentworth, they just they just keep going up. I mean, they they amaze uh, us as well. Um, that's twenty million dollars more. Yeah, yeah. True. By the time you by the time you pay off Wentworth, it's going to seem like a steal uh, well, in um, terms of dollar per square foot. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, when no when Noble High School was built, um, it was the biggest high school in the state at that time. This was I don't know. 18 years ago now, a uh, long time ago now, anyway. And um, I think that it was budgeted at something like, uh, what came in at about $26 million for a 275,000 square foot building. You know, that's a $70 million building now. Mm -hmm. So that's just, that's just the way that it works. Um, with your crystal ball, is there a way to kind of say if this project were built in, tw you know, 2019 versus 2023 versus 2025, is there a way to kind of project out what it would cost the community? Yeah, yeah, you can. You can. Um, uh, a simple way to do it is just to take the bottom line and add two to three percent per year compounded, you know, that's, that's a, again, it's a reasonable number. Some years it'll be three quarters of a percent, some years it'll be five percent, but that's a pretty conservative number too. In the past we've used three percent a lot. 
but but yeah. So you can you can figure out what it will probably be. It, 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 and the only way it becomes significantly less than that if you have another recession. You know where work's being done for. Joanne, would you like to remind us what what works with the cost the first time? What? Yeah, if it's been approved after oh. the first building committee was convened. Oh, fifty-five oh. million. No, that's not. No, 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 no. no. Eight million. Eight million. Oh, that's eight million. That's eight million. That's that was the year after the the middle school was built. Oh, right. So if we built it then, oh. <laughs> everybody. And the middle <laughs> school cost the town one hundred and seventy-four thousand dollars. Right. Because it was a state project, so one hundred and seventy-four thousand. Right. For the middle school. For the middle school. Yeah. And how much for the modular? Yeah. Mm. How much for? How much for the modular? How much for those cops? One hundred and seventy-four <laughs> thousand. <000. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. About twenty-five. Yeah. Uh, so so I mean, there's no doubt that these are that these are, are big numbers uh, to explain to the community. Um, but uh, you know, in in general, you'll be paying whatever you decide to do. Be paying it back in cheaper dollars over time. And by the time you pay off that 20-year bond, you'll look back at it and think, oh, God, we practically stole. I mean, you practically stole the high school. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what the exact numbers are for the high school now, but I mean, we did Scarborough High School, and then several, numerous years later, we did Portland, uh, uh, South Portland High School. You know, similar size facilities, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Um, you know, you, you, same contractor, in fact, and uh, you know, your, your prices for your existing high school were down very, very low. And we got more. Yes. We, we got more with our school than they did. Yeah. yeah. So are you looking for us to take a vote on something tonight to put forward to the... I'm just trying to... I don't think we need to have a... You're hands looking up. for oh, consensus? Oh, I think it's... Song? Yeah. Kind of just... Kind of consensus so that Dan can go back and put together more information on whatever options you are selecting. Over and then we can hand that right. over to the... I threw my selection out there, so if anybody wants to jump on board, feel free. Well, and I agree with you, Christine. Yeah. I, I definitely agree, too. I'm wondering, um, Todd mentioned this, the uh, yeah. looking forward 20 years. If we could have something like this on both the middle school, mm -hmm. um, I hadn't heard before tonight about um, all of the failing <laughs> systems there. So, I mean, the, the modulars are an obvious, glaring problem, but this, there's real aging stuff happening inside the building as well, as well as the primary schools. I think that, that would be a really, it's a really powerful tool yeah. to present to the public. Yeah, we have to do some additional work on, this, this, let's say, the, the three primary schools. We have to do, we have to make some additional assumptions about what the renovations might really be. We work, work with Todd to do that because when these were done for the RSU 21 schools, those, those schools had, were pretty far along in the design process. So we had a lot of information, but, but it is doable uh, to, to do that. And so closing the three primary schools and building one consolidated school, again, there'll be soft numbers because <laughs> you know, it's, it's uh, very early in the process, but it would be interesting to see if there's a point where the uh, consolidation might pay for itself. That, that's, that's sort of a magic question. And the do nothing line isn't literally do nothing. It's right. Maintain. 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 Right. Maintain. You're still spending hundreds that's of thousands different. of dollars to, to keep your buildings from deteriorating to the point where you can't really use them or they're not safe. And also conceivably would we need to be adding more modulars on? Uh, I mean, it sounds like you already yeah. <laughs> need the space. It sounds. I know. I'm not <laughs> that, but, but I mean, that's, that so would be the do modulating. nothing. We shifted everything from the blue point mm -hmm. area, update corners and to make corners over to Pleasant Hill and we can shift it back if we need to. The hard part <coughs> about Scarborough is that marsh, darn marsh yeah. in the middle, <laughs> it's hard to redraw lines except sort of in this weird Circular, U shape yeah. because of transportation because yeah. you just can't get those kids to that school without a boat. And we literally only have like, based on Dan's numbers, the capacity available is literally yeah, like 20 gonna say So it's the, that's the upheaval that redrawing the lines creates. I don't, for 20 I don't, I don't want Joanne to retire anytime soon. Right. So <laughs> I don't think we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> so and it's happened at least, you know, 20 
15 years. I mean, it does, and we do shift, and people live, but it does. Uh, but it hurts. <laughs> well, and I think that's important <laughs> too for the walk in the building, building and figure out it's not that bad. <laughs> no, you, people love it over there. Yeah. Um, but I think it's important for the public too because, you know, reading this in the leader on next Friday, and so I think um, <laughs> it's important to sort of maybe mention what our options, what the options are that we're sort of con have been considering and understand that our job, what we're charged to do is make educated, non-emotional decisions that best serve our students. Mm -hmm. And so yes, do I love Blue Point School with all of my heart? Yes. yes. And do I love that we have neighborhood schools? Yes. But school board Jody Shea understands that it's not efficient, it's not the best option financially, like we need to take that into account. So it's important for us to continue to talk about it so parents don't freak out. Mm -hmm. right. it's, it's the right decision and so we always need to sort of go back to that. Yes, you love your neighbors for school, but the right decision is not to have six boilers that are 22 years old. Mm -hmm. It's just not. And another factor for the, the benefit of the parents is that nothing moves quickly. So if we don't start planning now, their kids are going to be in high school before we change the neighborhood school. So it won't so be so yeah. sad for them. They'll be fine. They'll be okay. The rumor mill now starts that they're closing Next out of high school. <laughs> <laughs> Next year. 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 Turn around time to find out what number <laughs> 40 to 70,000. Yeah, I had the schedule written in here. Um, late to late, speaking of night. Yeah. yeah. So April 14th, you submit the application. They start touring buildings in May. They'll spend the rest of 17, maybe a little bit longer, touring all the buildings that have applied. So in 2018, they'll start assessing where they think all these buildings uh, will land using their scoring system. You can go on the Department of Ed website and look at Chapter 61, I believe it is, and they have the, the scoring system <coughs> they, that they use. So it's probably at the very, very, very earliest, the second half of 2018, you might have a number back. But the DOE's been saying, you know, it may be 2000, early 2019 before they've, uh, they've done it all. And, and what happens is, is they release the scores and then districts have the right to appeal if they think that their score is too low. So there oftentimes is two, three months worth of appeals and, and you know, lots and lots of meetings to make that happen. And then the final, final list goes to the State Board of Education and, and they approve it. So it's a couple years away, probably, before you have that definitive list. Well, then even if your number is high up on that list, I mean, we saw how long it took to get it's five years before you would yes. do anything. If you if you scored number one on the list, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's probably it would probably be four to five years right. easily before that you know you're moving in. That's just that's just the way that it yep. works. Mm -hmm. Now, do we get um, because we're sort of looking at maybe consolidating three schools into one? Does that give us any? We don't have well, a back look at it. They, they, don't, they, don't, yeah. they, they don't look at that. They, right. they, don't, they, look, they literally look at it as an individual school as if we're in the middle of a, of a cornfield in Iowa, you know, just completely divorced from everything else. But I mean, they certainly will know when they're assessing the schools that this is a classic candidate for consolidation. I can't imagine. Uh, but you won't necessarily get any points. To, to further your your case, I think that that's I think that that's correct. And that happened in Brewer, didn't it? That happened in Falmouth too, didn't it? Oh well, in, in Corinth they uh, they closed. I want to say that's my my partner Jeff Larimer did that building. I think I think they closed five schools, mm -hmm. built one consolidated school for like six towns. Mm -hmm. So that's a kind of an extreme example, but they they would certainly uh, not renovate three schools. Um, 
Yeah, Sanford's another another example. Buckland Consolidated, was that another? Pardon? Buckland Consolidated, didn't they close? They closed quite a few yes. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. my partner Jeff Larimer did that building yep. as well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so I, I think that there's a, a couple things that are sort of related, but they're also a little bit in independent. One is for the community to know that you're applying for state funding. And, and again, it's been a long time, six years or so, since they, they took applications. So that's a big deal. So it's basically and every school in the state of Maine is going to apply. There will be many because it's <laughs> been so long. Yeah. I mean, it used to be that list got updated maybe every couple of years, yeah. maybe every three years, but now it's, it's been 2010-11 was the last cycle. So, um, <coughs> and, and the school, you know, I said they funded 16 schools. School number 17 may not end yeah. up first on the list. They may still be 17, or they may be 25 in the next list, because you never know. There, there's plenty of need in the state. I'll and they're that. held harmless, so any improvements that they have done to their schools since then, right. um, does, I mean, it's not like, and the same benefit will happen to us, and that's why we will still apply, even though we're not quite sure what will right. happen. We want to have that held harmless status. Right. So if you, if you score high, fantastic. Uh, there's going to be years worth of time between getting that letter and and moving in, but at least you'll have a very clear uh, a vision of what what's going to happen going forward. If you don't get funded, then you've essentially exhausted the, the most um, you know financially robust potential that you have to get other funding to solve your needs. So it would be good over the next year and a half if this process gets gets um, done at the Department of Ed for the case to be made about these additions and renovations to the community pretty much consistently. And I don't think you want to let this be uh, cold for, for two years and then say, okay, now we, now we really need to do something. Because again, in theory, your population during these next two years is going to continue to grow and grow and grow. So when that, when that uh, summary comes back, you'll have a sense of, of you know, are the projections still right on track? Or are they, you know, are you having more students than were projected or less? So that's a big, big piece of information. But it would be good to have your contingency plan so you know that on the day you get that, the next day you're going to do whatever. You're going to, you know, organize a, a campaign to consolidate the primary schools. You're going to do something. But to have, have a, a plan at hand uh, so this next year and a half or so is, is, uh, is productive uh, for you. And the other thing I would just add as a point of consideration, our middle school was a state-funded project. Right. Wentworth was not. Thinking about the future of our educational program and what types of schools we would want to bring online if and when we did decide that we wanted to consolidate or renovate the middle school, does a state-funded project meet our community needs? Is that knowing that that building was too small and knew it was too small the minute it was being built? or at the time it was being built, the minute it was open. I mean, that's again, you, you have a different quality when it's a state funded project. So I think that that's also really important for us to consider um, when we're thinking about this. But the cost of Wentworth was in line with or less than if it had been state funded. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. We did it right. Because we're good <laughs> at <laughs> building schools. <laughs> So is it helpful to maybe review the potential options and then asking for everyone? Yeah, so they're on page 15 of your handout. So option A, basically, there's always a status quo option. Basically, uh, it says do nothing, but it, that's not really true because you have to do some things, uh, like your roof this summer. You're going to have to do that, it sounds like, no, no matter what. But it's it's basically doing, it's taking care of only the most urgent problems and doing really the minimum that you need to just to keep your, your doors open. Option B was to uh, renovate existing facilities and, and improve their energy, energy efficiency and sustainability. So that's an option where you keep those three primary schools, but you do significant upgrades. It would be great, again, if you could remove those quasi-permanent classrooms from each of those three schools build permanent classroom space, maybe add additional classrooms for the growth that's coming, upgrade the mechanical electrical systems, take care of all those technical and educational uh, uh, problems, you know, new, new windows, new, new boilers, new everything. Uh, but you keep the three of them in operation. Option C 
is uh, replacing the existing modulars with, uh, I would say, new modular construction of a more permanent kind. Again, we talked about this the last time, where at the middle school, for example, you've got 12 or 11 classrooms and a, and a lab uh, in a, in a quasi-permanent building. There are companies in the U.S. that make modular buildings in that they produce sections of the building in the factory and you know put it on trucks and bring it to the site mm -hmm. and drop it in place. So instead of building it sort of <laughs> stick by stick by stick, uh, they would they would do it uh, in in modules. And we we did some research on Julie's request at the, uh, before the last meeting. There's there's a gazillion companies. Or the uh, the dollar per square foot range was all over the map. And there are, there are several in the Boston area. But that is something that we could um, at some point. You, know, you could do a sketch and see if we could get something more more firm than you know 180 to 300 dollars a square foot. Um, but that would be that would I don't know if there'd be a savings there or not. Of course, they say that there are significant savings, but I think if there were, everybody would do it. it you know, just it's the law of nature anyway. And so that's option C. Yeah, yeah I just yeah. We hadn't really talked about this one before. So would this option, with the more permanent modulars, I guess we're calling them, um, would that plan include some sort of enclosed, like, I don't want to call it a hallway, but yeah. an enclosed walkway yeah. from the main building to the modulars? Yes, yeah, in, in theory, I mean, when, when I, I, I spent uh, part of the day, and Heidi spent, I think, an entire day just going, you know, Googling, uh, stuff all over the country, and some of the buildings that they showed were pretty complex. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, the difference is that they build they build it in sections, so they would bring a wall to the site, you know, a chunk of exterior wall that may be 10 feet wide and 14 feet high, whatever. Um, they, uh, in theory, that component building saves money, so you could, in theory, build it to the plan that we had sketched, which is a two-story addition, roughly on the same plan as the existing middle school classrooms, but with wider hallways. <laughs> and uh, you know, no, we can no. see what that what that might be. So that but that doesn't fix any common spaces. No. no. Or that wouldn't fix any of the common areas that are already too small. No, and and and, and that's a good it's a, it's a good statement because it may be that all of the <coughs> smaller additions, expanding the cafeteria, kitchen, admin, all that. It may make sense just to build those stick built rather than to try to do something small and fussy with components. And a lot of the stuff they had, I, I saw a bunch of schools in these brochures, but they were <coughs> pretty big schools, or they were just a great big chunk of double loaded quarter classrooms, just, just one Part after a, a, another. A lot of the cost savings is it, it cuts back on the schedule. They can do it a lot faster. Right. You know, like carrying contract waivers long, or right. trying to do it in the summer while school's not in session. But that's where it's really beneficial. But at 188 to 300 dollars a square foot, which is the, your broad range, your dollars per square foot for the middle school was 250. Yeah. The, it's, the, it's the in number that you range. use. So, to me, you can have a quasi-permanent band-aid for 188 to 300, or you could have a permanent real building that looks like it's supposed to be there and doesn't look like it's an appendage yeah. for the same price. Mm -hmm. Again, it's really a schedule for you save. Yeah. Yeah, and again, the, the, well, we, we're beyond urgent at this point. Unless we get new windows. Oh. windows. <laughs> Can't open them. It's an and, and, building. and the the numbers that, that I saw on these websites, it wasn't clear whether those were just construction or total project costs. Yeah. Whereas the numbers that that uh, that are in here include total project costs. So again, it's it's an apples to you know uh, orangutan kind of. Until <laughs> <laughs> so we have more time to figure it out. So I, 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 again, I, I believe in the market, and I would I would think that if. If there are these vast savings by modularizing buildings and the components, then everybody would be doing it all the time. So I just have to believe that it's not that simple. It may be great for some very simple type of building, but not necessarily a school. I don't know. We can see. 
I think option, I support option D and option E. Let's keep going. So, <laughs> okay. Let's keep listening so people can hear what we're right. talking about. So on page 17, option D is to create the consolidated primary school building on the, on the municipal campus. Again, that would be the, I, the ideal thing. I mean, you, you, could, you could put it elsewhere in the town, but uh, there's not a lot of, of uh, open land available in the sort of middle of the town above the marsh. And uh, so, if you could if you could work it into the campus, that would be a, that would be just a fantastic thing from an urban planning standpoint. And then option E is to expand the middle school, as we talked about before, replacing the 12 modular classrooms with a two-story wing, and doing all these other miscellaneous, uh, mi more minor additions, cafeteria, kitchen, library, admin, guidance, things like that, to give to give appropriate space. Uh, with room to grow, and then we could add to that list expanding the gym if you'd like. Again, that's just a, a little spreadsheet exercise if we were to, say, double the size of that space to make it more like Wentworth. I think we order a gym. Right. If we <laughs> order a gym, right. I'll take one of those. It is like an alley Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then um, option F, which is something that uh, I know uh, makes Kelly's heart uh, <laughs> heartbeat stop because <laughs> we looked at it in the, in the earlier study, which which is to uh, basically put the sixth grade in the Wentworth building to therefore make the middle school seventh and eighth. So automatically you you take care of a lot of their overcrowding problems overnight. The problem is when we did that, Give we had the <laughs> yeah exactly shifted over it. It, it uh, you ended up taking up you know bed spaces and all kinds of stuff to cram those extra kids in there. And so then you would have the option you could add classrooms to Wentworth. You could add four to six classrooms, maybe maybe more. Um, and there is room in the back of the building to do that. At the ends of those those two classroom wings, there's plenty of space. I think I think you've got enough space to put eight. Eight. Yeah, eight at the end of each of those wings. Right. So, I thought it was uh, eight total. No, no, because four down and four up. I'm pretty I sure. Can, I sure. No, no, it's two. No. It's, it's I can two and two. It's two, and two. Yes. So there'd be four on each wing for a total of eight. Classrooms. Yes. So you'd have to build a new pre-K three school. Just plan for the future. Preschool <laughs> coming. Uh, I'll let you know. Option um, F, I just put a big X. The same problem that's yeah. happening yeah. at the middle school yeah. to Wentworth in terms mm -hmm. of common spaces. Um, being not if you school. took third grade yeah. out. But that does no, not No, no, not, not right. Yeah, I mean, the other thing too is that you can build four to six more classrooms, and that's fine for at the moment. But right. in the future, will there be enough space when the schools have to grow? Mm -hmm. They probably won't. Yeah, that's a very good point. Question? Sorry. <laughs> so for option D, um, that's the primary school building, and those are the ones that were kind of like pinballing ideas of where can we put the new school. Um, so just question about the actual application, if we were going to submit this idea and say here is what we would like to do. So, or the problem. Yes. Yeah. So we would not have to apply and say, like, our. We wouldn't have to tell them where we were doing it when we apply. No, because they don't care. So there wouldn't have to be the whole making sure that we're not like killing a national treasure or something yeah. in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> a national treasure that is the swamp of yeah. the yeah. yeah. You never know. Yeah. 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 Surprise! Yeah. 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 Two different people that we're we we need to sort of drama. talk to about yeah. this. Okay. One being, we're applying for the state, and yeah. we just need to tell them our problem. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is a pretend joke. And, right. and, right. and yeah. two, yeah. the town council, the town is trying to create a, a plan. Okay. And so we need to say to them, don't touch our national treasure. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. That's what I need to do. Thank you. Yeah, we'll I, put I signs up. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, there's kind of two parts to that. Yeah. That if, if part of our community vision is to complete the campus by at some point having um, a consolidated K2, then it would be, can you save that land for us? Right. Mm -hmm. But the other part of that is, he, 
without looking at projections, without looking at growth, looking at immediate needs, we have some serious facilities issues. Mm -hmm. um, and it's costing our taxpayers more than it should on a daily basis because of the current reality. Right. Forget about the, the potential mm -hmm. growth. And so we need to say our long-range facilities need these things. Right. So um, that's, there's two parts of it. It's, you know, what's right. the vision, but also what's the reality, and what are we saying we need in terms right. of the facilities? Well, Someone was saying, what is it you need, and when do you need it by? Right. Yeah. Because that's, the, that's kind of the tricky part. Well, we're, we're not really going to be saying when we need it by. We're going to be saying what are all the other needs of the community and how do we prioritize all of our how community needs. Out? And that's yeah. when we'll learn where the schools fall into True, that. with the right. city, but internally trying to right. juggle what you need to pay now right. to maintain the buildings yep. versus what you could be doing in the future. Right. When is sort of that sweet spot for you to make sure that you're not yeah. spending too much on the school? Mm. That's hard to do until you have a vote. That's <laughs> hard. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, there's a lot of moving parts. Mm -hmm. So with that, with that, yeah. So I'm in favor of D and E. D and E seems like that's that's where we are. D and E. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So Dan, what we would need then is um, per the request that was already asked of us is right. to cost out option B. And that would mm -hmm. be um, yep. renovating the three K two, and then also creating the return on investment charge for option E and option D separately. So the do nothing for those schools if we were just to maintain them and keep them running, and then um, what it would be if if our options became a reality. And option B or E would have to include renovating the gym. Yes. Yes. So that's not currently on there. Yeah. So we were okay. trying to do B. B. You didn't say B as in boy, did you? No. We have to cost out. Oh, oh, right. yeah. Okay. Sorry. But that yeah. matters. Yeah. That's our, our, our B and E are our right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. She is saying right. that cost out B. Right. B is like yeah. the comparison so that we model. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I just want to make sure we heard you right. Yeah. So again, option B because we're just talking the letters. <laughs> and nobody at home knows any idea of what we're talking about. Option B was the new construction created new consolidated primary school building on municipal campus, and option E is um, renovate and expand the. Scarborough Middle School to the right side um, and include the, the modular classrooms right. and new construction and increase the gym size. And add a pool. And an extra. We need a pool. So it's really, it's not just um, E, it's E plus, plus the gym. expansion. Gym. And apparently a pool. <laughs> I think it's worth knowing <laughs> what it costs. It, it would be great if at some point we could make a presentation to the town council with, you know, this stuff mm -hmm. and, and really let them, you know, they could give us 45 minutes some night, sometime, so they could really see. With the selections that the school board just made, yeah. uh -huh. I think that yeah. they would like that. And, and just you show know, them just where they're going to go, right. what land it's going to take up to do it. So they can have a document in their hand that has the, at least a summary of all the problems and why this is important to, uh, to do. And then again, it'd be very, uh, really like it whenever it's appropriate to meet with their planner, whoever they have or will hire to do their master plan uh, and, and do a similar thing you know, in your office, for instance. Just sit down with, with them and, and as many of you who may want to come. And, um, go through all the stuff that we know and have thought of and talked about. And How long will it take um, for you to kind of prepare those materials based on the request you just made? Um, the pricing option for B could easily be done in a, in a couple of weeks. The return on investment charts take quite a bit of time. Um, uh, I, I, can, I can show you how we structure the, the data uh, for RSC 21. But you know, could all of that could easily take a month or so. I don't. Do you have any idea what where they are in their process? The the, the town waiting for us. <laughs> well, then I mean, have, you know, if they've hired someone yet, or they have they started their master plan? Yes. Yes. Okay. 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 There's multiple components to yes. their planning right. process too. Right. So this is 
the capital improvement priority list, if you will, is one component of right. it, but then there's other long-range strategic planning exactly. being done. Yeah, okay. Is my understanding. Yeah. Okay, so about a month, that's what I figured. Okay. Anybody have any other questions or questions? Yes. Yeah. I want to thank uh, Jody Shea for spending her birthday with us. Okay. Hey. Hey. Happy birthday. Hey. I think it's been great. I think this has been a great the best birthday ever. Meetings yeah. all day, Jody, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've had to do it, so I think it's fair. Uh, we all have. Yeah. 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 Shall we sing? <laughs> after. Uh, after the gavel. The special budget vote was on my birthday. Yeah, I have to get a good person. Yeah, that's true. Anything <laughs> else? I just want to thank Anne and Lisa yeah. for all the time. Thank you very much. Thank being so responsive and at our back folks for being here and chiming in. And yeah, thank you. Yeah. Our pleasure. Okay, that's it. Uh, we are at 8.0. Move adjourned. Second. All in favor? Six plus two. Adjourned.